I love. Self all sorted out here. Got five minutes. E Foundation put out some interesting stats. 4.54 billion internet users today. 73% of that are made from a mobile device. Half of the average daily internet time is via mobile. Holy moly. That's crazy. I just retweeted it. Let's see. Oh, Cybercom, cybersecurity alert. Bendy Bear malware is suspected to have compromised several East Asian governments through actions similar to Black Tax water bear incidents in the past. That sounds surprising. Using old methods, it's not everybody patches everything. Been kind of reading about the the hacker who tried to poison a Florida city's water supply. Yeah, here I'm gonna retweet this from Liz. They tried to change the setting for sodium hydroxide in the water. Crazy. Oh, and I should set this on streamer mode so we don't get those little beeps during the class.
Let's see, let's see, what else? Another WordPress vulnerability through a third party app. That's not new news. It just keeps happening. CD project was hacked. We discovered that we had become victim of a targeted cyber attack to which some internal systems were compromised and in unidentified attacker gained unauthorized access, collected certain data. That's the ransom note. They had backups, good for them. We will not give in to demands or negotiate with the actor being aware this may eventually lead to the release of compromised data. Good for them. And the UAE put a Martian orbit, a Martian probe in orbit today. Good job for them. Cool. Well, it's 11. So I think it's time to get started. Record on this computer. Okay, welcome to module number three in digital forensics. Uh, this module is not necessarily difficult. If you have, and you should have, completed CIS 71 or something similar to uh, learning about hardware, computer hardware and software, this this whole module is going to be such a breeze that you're just going to fall asleep as I talk for five minutes. <laughs> uh, the real meat of this uh, module will actually be the lab. So let's just get right through this. As I have said before, you need to have an understanding of how things work. Getting into the field of security and digital forensics requires someone to already have that knowledge ahead of time before coming in to this stuff. So this should be review. For example, uh, I am looking at all the chats. Can you tell me what this is? It's old, all right. And yes, it, it is a SCSI cable. An old school SCSI cable, small computer systems interface. Um, now you may think, why on earth should I know what something from the 80s and 90s is? Because that's not showing up on my gaming computer anytime soon. Well, the truth is, it's still used. It's still out there. There are systems that our infrastructure depends on that use these old, old techs. Now, there, there's a fork in the road with this. On the one hand, if you are a forensics investigator for a company, for an organization, then you need to have all the tech that that organization has in your forensics lab that can narrow down a lot. For example, if, you're, if the company you are working for is an accounting company, well, more than likely they're gonna have modern or you know, within the last five years-ish systems. 
you won't find SCSI, at least not in its original form like this. What you would find it is, you know, a more system that you're familiar with. That, mean, that would mean that your forensics lab would need to have stuff that matches what you have in the company. On the other hand, if you are going uh, as like your own forensics investigator or you're going to join a forensics investigator lab who works for the government or organizations, you know, on like a contract basis or whatever, then you're going to have to have a you're going to have to have a cable. You're going to have to have a connection for everything imaginable from super old Apple IIs and beyond all the way up to current stuff. So you'll need to have a very big and wide closet to store the many, 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 many things that you could possibly find when you go out into the field. So depending on which way you go, whether you're working for a, a uh, under a company, an organization who uh, you're the internal forensics person, or you go the other way, uh, just being general digital forensics, you'll it'll determine how much a uh, CompTIA A plus knowledge you need to have. Here's another fun one. What is this? And I don't mean the power connector. I mean the data. Yes. PADA or IDE. And that is the connector for it. Different from SCSI, because SCSI is a chain based and IDE or PADA is not. Here's one that should be familiar. Yeah, that is SATA and its connector. All right, who is this? Yes, that is eSATA. Look at that, we're a, a third of the way through. I know, right? Uh, cloning a hard disk. There are two processes to make bit for bit copies. You can clone which is making an exact copy of a hard drive and to be used as backup, and an image, a file or group of files that contain bit-for-bit -bit copies of a hard drive, but cannot be used for booting or other operations. Cloning a drive is faster than imaging a drive, making cloning more practical. Before investigations, you should have a harvest drive that is sanitized and clean. And you could go, uh, you should do a DOD approved seven pass secure erase. It is also helpful to identify the, the specs of a suspect's machine like the make and model. Uh, that'll help you research the computer that you'll be working with and how to remove the drive since manufacturers set up their systems in different ways. You could use a system like this. These are one of the more fancier systems that have multiple connectors for different, uh, different systems from USB to IDE and so on. And then on the other side, there'll be a connector for your harvest drive. Um, yes, you know, using DD to do a complete image or saving to a file, those are two different ways. Yes, those would be your cloning versus image. Now, these should be familiar. No fair, the name is right on the sticker. They are non-volatile storage devices that are memory chips in the stationary layout of transistors. Of course, no moving parts. Most SSDs are flash memory NAND devices. In a single cell, 
NAND flash, each cell is one bit. In a multi-level or MLC, your each cell is two plus bits. Now things that I, that you need to remember that from A plus that relate to forensics with these things. There's a variety of controllers and firmware which affect how garbage collection, caching, wear leveling, encryption, compression, and bad block detection occur. SSDs, yes, we know that they're more efficient with their power, that they're definitely faster than spinning disks and can handle better things like heat and vibration uh, while suffering from wear leveling. Recovering deleted files from an SSD is more challenging because of things like garbage collection. It's unpredictable with solid state drives. If you run two hashes on an SSD, you may not actually get the same hash. Unlike uh, your regular spinning disks, SSDs must erase data before write can occur, completed in large blocks with high latency. The OS does not need to keep track of all physical locations. That is left to the file translation layer who maps logical block addresses to physical block addresses. So even though the SSD gives us uh, quite a, a benefit and boost of speed to our system, as forensics investigators, it gives us a problem because it doesn't read and write to the same place, even if data isn't going to be there. If it has to erase data, it actually release, re deletes an entire block. Um, if you do hashes, you may not get the same hash twice. That's going to be hard to make evidence admissible. You should all know what this is. And running with the gag, you know, um, always remember to download more. No, you don't have to say the name. Um, it is more volatile. RAM is more volatile uh, because it is erased when the computer is powered off. When it's on, you will have the treasure trove of information like internet searches, websites visited, passwords, all that kind of stuff. You really want to, uh, during an investigation, you really want to get to the system while it's still on and hasn't restarted. These useful systems connect multiple hard drives together for increased performance and reliability through redundancy. It's acronym you should already know before I even utter it. It's RAID, the Redundant Array of Independent Disks. As forensics investigators, you need to remember uh, which drive was in what place because you may need to rebuild the RAID array in order to read the contents of the data. So just because a, a investigation happened uh, or you, know, you need to launch an investigation, you don't just go in there and just grab all the disks. You wanna know exactly what order the disks were in to rebuild the array to get the data. And though you technically could download more by downloading a script that increases your swap size, that's kind of, that's not the joke. All right, what is this? You may or may not be familiar. Yeah, this is Firewire. There are different kinds of it. This is the this is the uh, what predates lightning, the lightning cable. Uh, so FireWire was a, a competitor to USB 2.0, and then later replaced by Thunderbolt. Uh, it started as FireWire 400. Uh, it had different speeds, of course. 
It then came 800, and then it decided to lose and give up against USB. If you did not know, or just kind of forgot from last uh, chapter, each device connected to a computer, information is stored in Windows registry. You can find every single volume that was ever attached to a device in the registry. So if, uh, uh, let's say the, the case was uh, trying to show that that certain user copied certain files from a disk, if you can get the USB disk and get its ID, you could check the registry to see if it was ever connected. And if so, there's a connection between the two. External drives should always be in your purview. When you are going to an investigation, make sure that you are checking to see if there are external drives around. And remember, just because they're around doesn't mean they're gonna be insecure. They might have things like Lux or a BitLocker or anything like that. <laughs> And I'm going with my earlier fork. Uh, if your organization doesn't have these things and you don't have to worry about it, but if you're uh, part of a forensics shop, you're going to have to be well-versed in everything. So here are some stuff from old to uh, work your memory, a 16 megabyte multimedia card that crazy? We have our SD cards of various sizes. We have our compact flash that are used in like old Cisco routers and cameras. Memory stick was a thing, but it is Sony proprietary, like a DVD plus R. XD picture cards were a thing, or extreme digital cards were a thing, but they lost to SD card. Again, depending on what you have, depending on what you're working with, you'll need to have some form of write blocker and reader for those various cards, for those various uh, devices. Switching gears, still in the removable media realm. We have our compact discs, our DVDs, our HD DVDs, who uh, not so much are winning because Blu-ray won that battle. And again, remembering how a basic optical drive works with lands and pits. Uh, remembering that there is a CDRW, the rewritables. and uh, going all the way up to Blu-rays. Good old floppies. It is not inconceivable to still find these things around. Zip drives, which were basically floppies on steroids. And magnetic tapes, oops. Those are still used if uh, you did not realize. Magnetic tapes are actually still pretty cheap for the amount of storage that they can hold. They're great for long-term archival storage. They do, they do really well in, we're gonna back something up and we're gonna put it in a shelf for quite a long time. Uh, the, those come in. Those come in handy. Again, these are things that you might not ever get to see again because your organization doesn't have them. But if you end up working in a forensics lab who just who services like a, uh, like a county or you know a state, you're gonna find a closet full of all these things. 
with all the readers and writers and, and everything. It's like walking into a history museum. Any questions on this brief uh, run through of history, of tech history? So yes, the uh, module three quiz will be related to, um, to some A plus knowledge. Uh, as far as I know, TAR is still being used as the format for putting data on those very huge archive tapes. Let me make this to a quick video and then I'll, sh I'll show you what you'll be doing uh, for a lab this week. <laughs> And I'll hit save and upload this. Module three lecture. And we'll put it in the CIS 77 playlist. Not made for kids. Cool, that's done. So now let's talk about the work ahead this week. As I make a new share. Of the course module. this anymore. There we go. Okay, so let's hit record. Okay, so this week, don't freak out. Number one. Yes, there are 15 little quizzes to do. Do not freak out. Because I can already feel the freak out. So I have put together a uh, sub a sub course on learning how to use autopsy. So you'll go to this Google Drive and you'll see all of these videos. What you'll do is you'll go through them. They are not long at all, a couple minutes. And then you'll you'll take a quiz based on it. These are not tough questions. They, it, the whole course is supposed to be done in eight hours. So what I've done is I've split it in two. This week, I've given you all the autopsy specific stuff. Next week, you'll do the labs that relate with it. So we're really dividing up those eight hours in half. These questions. So we uh, are we going to be using autopsy in this course? Yes, you are going to be using it, but not exclusively. That's why uh, in the first week, you had to make the SIFT workstation, the Flare VM, um, and Scotty, because you'll be using those along with autopsy later. Because the more tools you put together, 
uh, the bigger picture you'll be able to make in your reports. So um, I did put in two notes here that section zero doesn't have a quiz. Section 10, uh, they changed it from correlation to central repository. So when you're looking at it in autopsy, you know what they're talking about. But again, these videos are not long at all. They are very short. And the, the little quizzes that go with them are easy to get through. It, you should not take a long time to get through this content at all. But if you get stuck, ask away on Discord. And I'll, I'll help you get unstuck. Any questions? You actually could do this uh, the whole uh, this whole quiz uh, for autopsy without autopsy. Just by watching the videos, you could take these and knock all them out. So it may seem like a lot, but it's actually not. Questions, questions? I'm looking around, I see no questions. So I will stop the recording.